Hey folks, uh, so I've got a video, I want to try something. I have seen this done before, uh, but I don't know, I wanted to do it myself. Um, maybe I can make it a little bit easier for someone else who wants to try it. Um, another title for this video, I suppose, would be How to Fix Horizontal Lines on a uh, DMG. And you'll excuse my weird method of turning it on, I lost the power switch, but I'll find it at some point this rubber band off here. So I was messing with it. Can't really do too much. I did actually manage to fix some of the lines down here, but I, no matter how much I mess with it, I, I don't think these ones are going away. Uh, it does, I'll turn that down, that is insanely loud. Uh, it does work. It is usable as is, but you know, with all the missing lines, it's just, it's not great. So, I want to explore a few avenues to try and fix that. Turn that off there. And, uh, while I normally don't edit my videos, I will at least edit part of this one. Because this thing has a ridiculous amount of screws. Uh, this is an older DMG I picked up from Japan. The original model, 1989 models, did have, um... GIS, not Phillips, GIS screws instead of the tri-point screws of the originals, but screw tri-point or GIS, there's still a lot, so bear with me a moment. Right, so a million screws later, um, I have had this apart, but on and this one doesn't, but on some DMGs, I think there's a little bit of adhesive holding the screen to the uh, front panel here. This one it does need new um, membranes here. As you can see, some of them are broken. It still works as is, but the buttons are really mushy as a result, but don't need this now. So the plan for this one, and this is the reason I needed the, uh, shoot, I need a different bit here. Where are those? This is the reason I needed the um, LCD connector off of my uh, MGB, because I've got a plan on fixing these lines here. But to do that, I need to get the uh, this original screen off. So there's like 8 million screws in it, and then there's two more holding the screen itself to the PCB. Pop these out. And what's interesting is those screws actually screw straight into the PCB itself. So here's the plan. I want to go ahead and wire this thing up onto the back of it, shoot, I don't know, somewhere, uh, so that we can use this MGB screen that works perfectly fine. You just stick that on there. The, uh, the problem is that all of the pinouts that I could find online, they're all uh, basically for these wires here, or for these connections here. That just seems like quite a bit of work to try and solder it up on this side when I know I could just use... Oops, I messed that up. Oh well. Oh shoot, there's another screw there. There's a third screw. That's what I get for not paying attention before I started ruining it. A 
tiny screw. I was just about to grab that with my fingers and uh, well, that would have sucked. <laughs> How does this work? Oh dear. That seems easier. Right. So I'm just going to cut this thing off. Do not need it anymore. There we go. Good enough. And I totally ruined this ribbon cable, but that's okay because I don't really give a shit about this screen. There is a way to desolder these without destroying them, but uh, the way I did it is not the proper way. I'm gonna clean up these solder joints, make it nice and pretty. Cut this thing again. Sorry about the background noise. Kind of forgot that the uh, heater was on. There we go. Now, I still haven't decided yet if I'm going to be soldering to this or to just the um, ribbon itself. Either way, I am going to go ahead and pause the video and uh, at the very least let my phone charge up because the battery is getting pretty low and I just don't have the battery life to support me while I uh, try and figure out the pinout on this thing here. Uh, but otherwise, I will be back in just a moment. Right, so that was kind of tedious there. Uh, I've got a piece of paper in front of me with quite a few different things here. I've got two vertical pinouts listed. Uh, judging by the number of contacts, you should be able to tell which is which. But the one I have labeled H is this contact right here. The one I have labeled V is this contact right here. As far as I can tell, these pinouts are correct. This is just top to bottom. This one across the top here, ignore that. Uh, that this is um, the pinout for this ribbon cable, or at least all the pins that I care about. And then this pinout at the top is the pinout for the um, this connector here off of the MGB. And this pinout in particular is with the connector upside down. So when you're looking at it from the back of an MGB here, you can see pin number one is right here. This is the ground pin all the way over on the right. It's kind of weird. It's a little bit backwards, but that's that's okay because that's how we're going to have it plugged in uh, because that's how it has to connect up to the LCD. So that's pin one. I have it reversed on my paper here because from my orientation, it's going to be upside down, but that's okay. As long as uh, 
As long as we keep everything in check, we should be good. Uh, we'll get to this in a minute, but before I do that, I have to solder on this ribbon cable that I have prepared especially. This is just from an old IDE cable, specifically a um, an 80-pin one. These things are pretty good to have around for, well, for this. But first we gotta tin the contacts here. My iron is on, what, there it goes. Okay. So. Realistically, I should just dip these in flux to tin them. But this seems to be working. It's a little bit unorthodox, but we'll just roll with it. So it would probably make my life easier if I started from the middle, but I'm not going to do that. I do, however, want to separate these two. They melted together. Oh, that's not good at all. Let's try some of my flux pen. This probably isn't going to work. Never really does. At least not for me. I don't like it. Yeah, shocker. Not to say that this flux pen is bad, it just is not the proper flux for the solder that I use. The last thing I want is shorts. I say that, and then I just got a big old solder ball on these, but that's okay. This is what solder does when you don't use flux. And it is tremendously irritating. I'm thinking. I should just there it goes. Holy crap. Okay. There should be enough residual flux on these pins to just solder straight to it. But it's probably not how it's gonna work out. Rarely is.
Yeah, this is probably going to be a problem. I think once I get going, it should be a little bit easier. Just gotta remember to give each pin a wiggle. As I solder it down. Okay. Nearly there. Hopefully I don't desolder these as I'm going. Boom, there we go. And they survived the wiggle test. So I'm probably gonna end up dousing this in hot glue, but I've learned my lesson and I'm going to do that after I know it works. So here's the frame. I did take it off here. It just pops out with a few snaps once you've got the screen desoldered. I did end up grinding away some of the plastic here. So you can see when this is flat up against the board, there's a, uh, well, I guess my finger's not the best example because it's not exactly flat. But let me put that on there and you can see there's a bit more space for the connector itself. There we go. I did also grind away this little corner here because the pocket LCD is just a hair bigger than the original DMG LCD and just needs that corner. Otherwise, I think we're good to go. Or at least to, good to start wiring this up. So this is going to end up going 
right here like this. And I did check, there is enough room. Uh, the thing is, I think I want to send this up through here. I'll have to get this out of here. Secure that there. And then I can take these wires and connect them up where they need to go. So let me bend this this way. And that should do what I want. Again, probably going to end up just drowning this thing in hot glue because, yeah, but one step at a time. Next, I need to actually connect up all of these wires, and that's where this sheet of paper comes in. So these, ignore that noise in the background, these V lines, V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, across these two connectors, these are all connected through this voltage regulator on the front board so they don't actually have a pin out right here which means I will have to solder on to these two connectors or directly to this voltage regulator but I'm leaning towards soldering directly onto these connectors here and I probably should have cut another notch in this thing I wasn't really thinking about having to solder to this side oh well I'll figure it out and okay. So I guess I'll get started with the ground. And yeah, this is going to be super tedious for both of us, and I am going to have to pause at some point, because as I'm sure you're familiar, if you're not familiar with my videos, I film with a camera that tends to overheat after about 20 minutes, which limits my sessions to about that long. So this is the ground. That's going to end up going right about there. Cut this down nice and short. And it's probably, I probably shouldn't solder that yet. This next one is con control. Not sure what it controls, but it's the control. It does get soldered to this ribbon. So that can also be pretty short. But it's going to end up going over top to one of these here. I'm not going to trim it yet. Next is data latch. Which goes right next to control. So these two are going to go up and over like that. H sync. All of these go on the on this connector. These are Yep. I probably should be soldering these. Let me at least separate these lines. Each sink. D zero. One. 
clock. I have no idea where that goes. Shoot. I'll have to figure that out. Uh, Alt Sig. I don't know what that does either. Presumably that goes B6. Where is that? Or H oh, okay. That goes on the ribbon connector as well. V5, V3, and V2. These ones go down to one of these two. I need my tweezers. One, two, three. These are the three voltage lines. Next one is data latch and V-Sync. Excuse me, what are you doing with my wire? I gotta stop leaving that drawer open. All right, data latch, which yes, goes on to the ribbon. is V-Sync, which goes under the ribbon. V-Sync is plus five volts, which also goes under the ribbon. Another Alt-Sig, which goes under the ribbon. And then the last three lines are voltage again. So these two I need to solder first. Or I say two, but it's really six. So these last three are V1, V4, V5, and then this other group of three is V5, V3, and V2. Which, if this goes here, I really should stick this down or something. I don't know. B5, B3, and B2. That's going to end up going onto this connector here. Which means it needs to be about that long. This one is going to be on B1, B4, V5 on this connector. That should be pretty easy. We'll do this one first. I want to put that in the middle. Okay. So I'm just going to cut that. And then we'll work backwards. Those a little bit longer. Cut them again because I tore up the ends. Well, I suppose it is solid core wire, so it really doesn't make a difference. Excellent.
Oh, my soldering iron went to sleep. Wake up. There's a sensor in the uh, handle. And if it doesn't move in, I don't know, like five or ten minutes or something, it goes to sleep. Okay, it says it's back up to heat. Find out in just a second. Yes, it is. All right, so I'm going to get these three soldered and then we'll take a quick break. V1 goes to the first connector here. Uh, these need to not be shorted. And if the camera does cut out, I'm just going to finish soldering these two wires and then I'll be back in just a second. The two goes... Oops. One below that. And V5 goes directly below that. And there we go. Cool. So I'm going to take a quick break, let the camera pull down, and uh, we'll be back in a wee bit. Right, so I did touch up these joints real quick, but I didn't do anything otherwise. So next, I'm going to go ahead and solder these ones down. I would like to not wrap those over the joints. They'll go right here. This is V5, V3, and V2. And those are going to go right up top here, so that's about as long as they need to be. Cut a little bit short, just in case. Or I guess a little bit long. Oh, I should strip these, huh? So, leftmost one is V5, that one goes on the bottom here, goes the fifth one down, one, two, three, four, five, flip this around. Three goes one gap above it. I should have cut that short too. You know what? I'm never going to redo this, so let me do it right the first time. 
these should all be the same length. Mostly. tried staggering them and I didn't realize that they're all going right next to each other or I did realize I just I don't know I wasn't thinking about it okay not perfect but much better So that one goes there, this one goes one spot above it, and that one goes directly above it. And I definitely need to add some more solder to both of those. And somehow that worked without making a total mess. Right. Next. I guess I'm going to start all the way at the end here. Let me make sure I got these in the right order. I forgot to check and see where clock goes, so I guess I'll leave that one for last. Alt sign. All right. So this last one is alt sign. It goes on pin 13, which means all of these are going to be crossing over. Wonderful. Wondering if it might be best to start from the no, nah, it's probably best to start from the inside. Pin thirteen. I'm gonna mark that off. Just to make it easier on me going forward and counting. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Got it. Okay. That way I don't have to find pin 13 every time and I can just count, okay, so and so many pins from pin 13. This is going to go... Right there. I'm going to try and leave some slack on the wire though, because chances are pretty good I'm going to have to keep moving this around. So let me cut it right there. It's probably not enough slack, but I'll make it work. I'm going to desolder the speaker for now because it's getting in my way and annoying me. I'll fix it later. Sorry. <laughs> oh, good lord. All 
Mental note, don't do what I just did. If you accidentally short these out, don't try and wipe it up the cable. You're just going to have a really bad time. Shit. <sighs> Well, you know what? That's actually fine. I hope. Let's double check I didn't just short that. Good. Okay. And of course, in doing that, I also ruined my mark. But I think we're going to be okay. Let me just double check I hit the right pin. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Bingo. I'm gonna add a bigger mark. Mark off. Lucky number pin thirteen. Excellent. So next on the list. From left to right, this one is plus 5 volts, which also goes right here. Looks like it goes to pin 11, so one over from that. And to do the same thing as before. And it's pretty much just going to be a whole lot of this from here on out. So hopefully I don't ruin too many other things. That's 13. This right here must be pin 11. Well, that's actually pin 12, but I'll need to solder to it eventually. It's just easier if I tin it right now. Next is V-Sync, so pin number 13 on this connector, which goes to pin number 12, so right between those two. I should note that if this does not work, which unfortunately I have a feeling it will not, I have absolutely no idea how to troubleshoot it. Ah, shit. I think I have that backwards. So first, first pin, alt sign, which was pin number 13, yes. Next pin is plus 5 volt. Oh, okay, never mind. Just kidding. V-Sync is 12. Okay. I, I was looking at it backwards, don't worry. We're all good. So next is data latch, which looks like it goes to pin 18. So that'll go, well that's 21, 20, 19, 18.
Really, I should just tin all of these. Except the ground. I'm not going to be using that ground. Alright, where does this go? To pin 18? Yeah. So 21. Twenty, nineteen, eighteen. Just double check. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Bingo. Next. We just did those three already. So this pin is alt sig, which I have H6, which is where also pin 13. So I don't know if I need to solder this. Um, at least it's shorted on this PCB. I don't know if it's shorted on the screen itself. So I'm going to try to solder both of these together to pin 13. Hopefully I don't make a complete mess of this. But if I do, well... It's just how it goes. Let's actually tin this wire this time. Might help. Okay. Somehow, I didn't completely blunder it. Next one. This one is the clock wire. I have absolutely no idea where that goes. I forgot to trace it. So we'll move on to next one. D1, which goes to pin 15. So if you wanted to install a handy dandy bivert, 14, 15, you could install it right here instead of on the back PCB. This is one of the two signals that you would be by biverting. Next up is this wire, which should be D0, which will go right next to that one on pin 16. And I'm sorry, I know you're not here to watch the back of my hand, but it's just the way it goes. Okay, next up should be H-Sync, 
which goes pin 17, so right next to that again. And I'm trying to lengthen these wires so that they can all lay flat without intercrossing or crossing over. Probably missed that mark, but oh well. I say pin 17 right there. Boom. Or at least without crossing over too many times. Right next is data latch. So what is that? That should be H10. Where is that? That is also pin 18. Rut row. Did I mess that up too? I think I did. No, this one is pin 18. That's that's correct, but I think the one where I have two soldered to pin 13 is incorrect. One of those should probably be on pin 14. Whatever pin 13 was, alt sign. This will go on to 18. So 21, 20, 19, and 18. Right. Next up, number two is control. Where the hell does that go? Pin 19. Rarely have to cut any off this one. And last but not least, the ground. And that'll just go to that. I could solder it to the ribbon, but that connects to the same thing and it's easier. Ta-da. All right, so now I need to figure out pin 13. Let me think. That should be I need to desolder both of these that are on pin 13. They might just sh short out on the uh, actual screen itself, so it might not even matter. But they have the same label, and I'd rather just double check. So this one, the long wire, should go to pin 13, I believe. I hope so. So the long wire is pin 12, no, pin 8 on the connector, which is H6, which I have going to 13. Yep. 
So that should go there. And then that one should go right next to it. Nice. So those are all connected except for clock. I have absolutely no idea where that goes and it's not labeled on either of my diagrams. So I'm going to pause a bit, let the camera cool down, do some more research and um, cut a small notch in that bracket wherever the hell I put it. Oh, there it is. All right, I'll be right back. All right, so I believe I have it figured out after doing some more research. Uh, it looks like the listed pinout here is not correct. So number 14 here, which I have listed as VH, this one, I believe this should be clock. And, uh, well, yeah. And what I did have listed here, I don't know, shoot, I had a, I think I had it right, oh, let's see. so yeah, okay. So these two alt signal uh, lines, pin number 8 and pin number 15 on the MGB side connector, these both connect together to pin number 13. Pin number 14 on the DMG connector is going to be clock. So I'll, I don't know if I'm going to uh, draw this up or anything, but let me show you the whole sheet of paper. This is what I have and what I've done on here, I went ahead and soldered my clock wire to pin number 14. And then I soldered those other two back to pin number 13 again, but I'm going to fix that solder because I think it looks really bad. And I'd rather not have to take this apart and do it again. Okay. Otherwise, I think we're good to go. Let me solder this speaker back on. Geez, how many strands were broken off? The speaker was ready to fall off on its own, apparently. So let's fix that while we're in here. I'm gonna use the same wire. I'm just gonna strip it and get some clean. Oh my god. Okay. Probably because that's 26 gauge. Yep. Okay. I'm getting antsy, guys. Does it really matter which one is which? I don't think it does. Not when you only have one speaker. And actually, that worked out perfectly. Okay. All right. Where is my bracket? I lost my bracket. Never mind. 
It's right here. Why don't you speak up? Okay. So on the bracket here, I did file out just a little bit in the corner so that the uh, wires have a place to go. But that only works if we actually route the wires through there. There we go. And that'll snap down. Those shouldn't go anywhere. Go in there. Connect up. Sit inside the bracket. I should have put a little bit more slack on the wire, but uh, it should be good. Nice, nice. Okay. I'm not going to put all the screws in. Ah, eh, screw it. Yeah, I will. No. No, that's a bad idea because if I do that, it won't work. Oh! <gasps> what cracked? Please don't tell me that was what I think it was. Ho, ho. Ho. It was the screen, but I think we might be good. Oh, oh, shit. That was... <sighs> Excuse me while I go change my underwear. No, I'm kidding. Oh, I hope I didn't just break this. This is like the cleanest screen I have. I'm breaking shit so you guys don't have to. I'll pop that out again. It's kind of a pain in the butt. So it doesn't want to stay in there. And the second I flip it over, everything else falls out of the holes. Okay, I think we got it. I think we're getting there. It would definitely help if I glued the screen into the uh, frame or something, but I think we're going to be good. This is a pain in the butt, and you guys just want to know if it works. But, uh, we're getting there. Trust me. Okay. Fucking stay. I'm actually going to get a little bit of capped on. Because cracking any more glass off this thing is uh, going to be a disaster. And 
one piece. Let's go right over. No. Now, I should have significantly less trouble putting this thing together. And hopefully, nothing else breaks. There, that is all the way in, and the screen is where it needs to be. Should have just done that from the start. How many screws do you think is enough? Three? We'll do four. Throw in my screwdriver. Nice. So there's enough room at the top. It is very squished, but I think we're going to be okay. As long as nothing breaks off here. Okay. Let's try it out, huh? That's enough screwing around. Already got batteries and a game in here. The game's not really going to do much as far as booting goes because it's not a uh, Game Boy game. It's a Game Boy Color game. That's okay. Let me get this stupid thing plugged in. There we go. Actually, here. Let's try out this. And uh, here goes nothing. <laughs> There's one way to improve your contrast without having to vibrate. Yeah. Man, I am so stoked. This is awesome. Alright. That's enough of that. Let's go ahead and put this back together. Throwing screws everywhere. Okay, here is the part where, presumably, I fast forward. All right, so there we go. Uh, yes, I am fully aware that I'm missing the power switch still. I uh, did something dumb, and um, well, quite frankly, I'll let you know what that dumb thing was when I find that power switch. But long story short, I took this Game Boy apart, I don't know, like four months ago, 
and I just kind of left it in pieces because I lost the power switch. And, uh, yeah. Anyway. That turned out way better than I was expecting. Uh, for those that don't know, the MGB screen is widely considered to be higher quality than the original DMG screen, which is better contrast all around. Um, there was actually a specific reason that I wanted to do this, but I'll get to that later. Uh, it wasn't just to put a new screen in this Game Boy, even though that was pretty cool. It was, uh, there's something else I want to do with it, but I had to do the work, the, the legwork ahead of time. Um, but otherwise, I think that turned out fantastic. And I am super excited for what this might mean. Um, I think I might work on a PCB adapter or something for this. I don't know. Probably not, because it still would require so much uh, manual wiring. But otherwise... Yeah, I think I'm done for the night. Actually, you know what? I think I might take a break from YouTube for the rest of the year. It's It's been really daunting, and I, I just, you know, I, I, I think I could use the time off. So, until next year, guys, have a good one.